Hey everyone, my name is Mohammad Essen, and in this video, you're going to learn how to work with with component input binding introduced in version 16 of Angular to quickly map the route parameters into your components. Let's get started. And before that, quick shameless plugin. Check out the ng cookbook second edition on ng-cookbook.com. It's a new book that I've published recently and people are actually loving it. Check it out. Now the application that we are working with right now is this one. We are trying to create an app which has a header which has a home page which renders a bunch of products and if you click on the view details button of any of the products it takes you to that particular product for example if i click the third one you'll see that the url contains the three as a parameter and then if i click the second one you can see this is two so these are the ids of the product and what we are going to implement is this product detail view now to show you the project structure, this is how it looks. We have two components. We have the home component and we have the product component. And if you go to the app.routes.ts, you can see that by default on the main route, we are basically loading the component home component. And this is a standalone component. So is the product component as well. So both of these are standalone and we are importing them using the load component so we can lazy load them. Now this one, as you can see, has a path that contains a dynamic attribute, which is a dynamic parameter reflecting ID. You can change this to anything like product ID or whatever. We usually use the ID and the component that we have right now for our product, which is this one, does not show anything at all. But we already have the product ID in the URL. So we are supposed to fetch that ID from Angular somehow. And then we are supposed to make an API call to get the product and then display the product. If you go to the product component, you'll see that we have an HTML, which is right now commented out. And for all of this, you should be at the branch that's called start here. So you'll see the link of this whole repository in the description. So you can just clone it and then shift to this branch that's called start here. And then you can run npm start or ng serve. And then the project spins up at localhost 4200. Now, the component right here that we have, which has the TypeScript file, should be using a signal because guess what that's the new thing that we should be using for basically reactive state management in angular so in here i'm going to create a signal for product to store the product once we have this from the api so we can simply say product equals and then we can use signal this is supposed to come from the angular core as you can see and then here you can define the type so this can be either the product itself or null so you can say product and when you do so, you'll notice that I'm already importing this from the interfaces. So it comes from the interfaces and you can have a look at that on how it looks. So it has the ID, title, price and whatnot. This will also be null because we are going to assign this by default as null. So let's give both of those types. And this is called a union type in TypeScript. Now that we have defined this, we need to get the information from the URL. And for that, we need to have the activated route. So we are going to say activated route. And this is going to be a service so we can say quickly inject and we are going to inject the activated route service from angular now that we have this let's implement the on init so we can say implement here and on init and then we are going to implement the ng on init method just like this now in this one we are supposed to get the id from the activated route and then make the api call now if you look at services folder you'll see that we have a product service which is an angular service and this essentially has an api which is a fake store api that returns some products to us we have just two functions in the service one that returns an array of products that we show in the home page and the second one is getting a product by id which requires an id as a number and when we call this method with a particular id this will return from the api one particular product as you can see right here now this component is supposed to call the function with the id so we need to first get the id so here we can say something like cons id and then we can get it from the activated route so here we can say this dot activated route dot snapshot and then dot params map dot get and yeah i i, I know what you're going to be thinking you're going to be like how does sn remember all of this because i've done this hundreds of time but still i agree this is really really weird because you have to remember all of this because not only we have this param map right here but then we also have this param map right here which is apparently an observable but this one the other one is not an observable you can actually get something out of it if you look at this this is of type param map so this becomes really confusing and now i have to define the attribute here id and this should be exactly the same as what i defined right here if this is changed to let's say product id then this means that i also have to call product id right here so they both have to be the same so i'm gonna revert this back and now i can say okay i've got this id now that we have this quickly console log the id right here so i'm just gonna say id here and then save this now if we go here and open our inspector you'll see that we have an object that has the id too 
because the ID right now here is two. If I type something else, you'll see that all of it can be seen right here. So we are getting the ID from the URL. Now let's go back to the previous one. And now let's use this ID to make the API call. So for that, we also need the product service. So here I can say product service equals, and here I can say inject, and here I can say product service. Now that we have the service, let's quickly call this with the correct ID. So here I can say something like this dot product service dot get product by ID. And here I can pass the ID, but the ID here is a string because what you actually get out of the pattern map is either a string or null. So we need to convert that into a number. So first of all, we could have an ID or we might not have an ID at all. So we need to check if we don't have an ID, then we can just return from here and you're free to redirect the user from here to a 404 or show a message like product doesn't exist. So I'll just write here, do something here. But if it passes this and reaches this endpoint or this code, then that means that the ID exists. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually convert the ID into number and then I'm going to pass that. Now you could also do this in two steps to make it more readable. So cons product ID equals number ID. And here you can pass product ID just like this. Now you can subscribe and here you're going to expect that we get the products array. Now that we get the products array, let's set this to our signal. So here we can say this dot, oh, this is not going to be a products array. This is going to be a single product. So here I'm going to say this dot product, which is our signal dot set because signal has a set method. And here I'm going to just assign product to it. Once we have this, we can go to our HTML and uncomment all of this. And now if I save this and go here, there you go. You can see that we now are showing essentially this product and you can change the IDs to get different products. For example, the three has a different one, four has a different one. And you can obviously go back to the home page just like this and then click any one of them like this one. And you can see this one. And then if I go and go to men schedule slim, you can see that one here as well. So you can see that all these products work perfectly. And this is the usual use case when we go from a list view to the detail view. Now, if you ask me if this is clean code, uh, I, I think that's debatable, but I don't really like all of this to be honest. And this is where the new with component input binding comes in. So what we can do instead of all of this is we can go to our config, the app.config.ts and where we are providing the router as a second argument here, we can say with component input binding, and this is a method. This basically tells Angular that all the routes that we have right now, they're going to provide this parameter as an input automatically within our component. And this is amazing. So that means I don't actually have to do all of this at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to declare an input here and here I'm going to say input and here I can say product ID. Now, the reality is that if I want to use product ID, I also have to name this product ID as well. So they have to be exactly the same, just like we had it here. So I can either say ID and then I can get it and say whatever. So here I can say that the ID is going to be of type string. And that means now I have my input. And instead of all of this, now I can just check if we don't have an ID, then we return from here. Otherwise, we have to go and inside here convert that to the product ID and the rest of the code remains the same. Now, if I save this, let's see if it works. Yes, it does. So if I go back to my home page and try to go to another page, you can see all of this works and you can obviously debug this as well. So if you go to sources and try to go to product.component.ts, you can go here and put a breakpoint and refresh. And now you can see that this dot ID right here is five. So it's getting this from the top header, which is awesome. Now, if I go to route and change this to something else, let's say I say product ID, do you think it's going to work? Let's see if I refresh now, you're going to see that this dot ID is undefined because we changed the parameter name. So I'm going to go back and fix this. So I'm going to say ID. I can do either this or I can alias this in the component. So I can go into my component and here you can say this is going to be product ID. Now we are providing this as an alias. And if I try to do this, you can see that alias is a better way of providing this. So I can save this now. And if I refresh the page now, you can see that now, even though we have different parameter name versus the input name, we still get the value right here. OK, so you can use the alias just like this. Now, there's one more thing that I don't really like that whenever I get the ID, I do have to transform that into a number. And this is not cool, right? 
So what we can do with this new input that Angular has been shipping for the past few versions is we can also go here and say transform. And then I can say here, I'm going to get a value of type string and I'm going to convert that into a number just like this, which means that this ID is automatically of type number. So I don't really have to do this at all. And I can just forward this dot ID automatically because this is going to be of type number and I can change this string to number as well because I now know that this is going to be number by default. So let's save this and try this out. So if I refresh the page now, you're going to see that the ID right here is automatically a number, right? What happens if I change the transform? So if I change the transform from here, now you're going to see that if I refresh, the ID that we'll get right here is of type string. Now, even though if the type is wrong, it's going inside this function and then it is concatenated in, in here. So it works by default, but it's good to see what we are talking about in general because this function accepts a number. We are basically transforming that into a number. So we are hundred percent sure of the type and the flow overall. And this basically means that I can actually get rid of all the other things that we had before, like activated route. I don't really need that anymore. So I can get rid of the activated route from here and that's pretty much it i can also remove this one as well and my app works as before so try this out in your own project or from the repository of this video and let me know if there's anything specific about angular that you want me to talk about until next time happy coding i'll see you in the next one